Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on Supergirl Season 6. Today we're going to be doing my review for Episode 5, aka Prom Night. This is the first part of the two-part episode. Next week is going to be the second part. That is directed by Kyla Lee, who plays Alex Danvers on the show. So this episode was one of my favourite episodes of the Arrowverse as a whole this year. And I think it's definitely my favourite episode of Supergirl this year. It's really great and I had such a good time watching it and I mean I watched it like twice now and it's just perfect like I loved it and I've always loved the Midvale episodes and this really proves it. I think this is the best Midvale episode as of right now. So let's go ahead and get into this so if you do go on to enjoy the video please be sure to leave a like and a comment and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. So we start off the episode, we have young Alex and young Kara who are reintroduced, obviously played by Isabella Vidovic and Olivia Nakanen. They have been on the show for a couple of seasons now and they always do such a fantastic job. I think they are the perfect casting for young versions of Kara and Alex because they really embody the characters. And I mean, you don't really miss out on our main actors because they feel the same, you know? They feel like our characters, so I always like these episodes. And this episode was definitely my favourite, actually, out of all of those. So, Alex pleads to Brainy to not mess up her past, so this is the only future stuff we see, well, present day, with the rest of Team Supergirl. And so, they explain that, yes, there is some crisis changes to the timeline, like Kenny is not dead, Kara's ex-boyfriend, and he's alive in this version of the timeline. Kara and Kenny, at the time in this timeline, were a superhero duo who worked together and Kenny even built a fortress for them which you see at the end of the episode and so also a big change Kara is with Kenny again this was referenced in the past however it was very briefly touched upon in the past and never at length and so this was the first time we got into that length about them and their dynamic and I'm gonna say this they really worked well together so I really liked them together and the chemistry was great between the actors I mean, I think they were both fantastic, and I really, really love Kenny in this episode. I think the recasting, because if you guys don't remember, he was a different person playing. I think this guy is really, really good, and I want to commend him on that, because he did a fantastic job. And I was, like, really into his story, even though he was just, like, reintroduced. Like, he's shown up on the show, like, once before, and this character, even with a recast was so good, like I was super into it and I think, you know, it's all down to him and also the writing was very good in this episode, that is something that Supergirl has struggled with this year because they have the two storylines and they're trying to link it and it just doesn't completely work, in my opinion so I was really happy to see them plan out like a two part episode that would be like a solid story and then from then on they would continue in a different way and like Kara would come back in episode 7 at the end so, I mean, we're barely any more episodes without Melissa. Like, we're going to have Kara, which is awesome, you know, with Alex, even though it's not Melissa and Kyla, it's Olivia and Isabella. But that's fine with me. Okay, so let's move on to the next thing. Throughout this episode, Brainy's trying to handle with the stress. He's stress eating, and, I mean, he can't find a way to keep control of all of this. And at the same time, Nia has got her own struggle. She's struggling with understanding her dreams in this episode. And she keeps on seeing a cage pink cougar that she thinks has some greater meaning because things normally do in her dreams. And she thinks where the answers lie is with her mum because she needs more guidance. However, you know, she doesn't really need that guidance because it's within her. But that was kind of what we went for in this episode. And Brainy and Nia were fantastic. I think they did a fantastic job. They were a great duo in this episode. And so they time travel back to 2009 where they bump into young Kara, Alex and Kenny, who are at a diner, and Kara sees it with her vision and, you know, her superheroing, and she's able to track them down, and that's where they meet. And so they go check it out, and it turns out, you know, this is Brainy and Nia, and Brainy and Nia, they pretend to be someone else. And so they say they're from the planet Psycon, and they make it up, obviously, that's not a real planet in DC. And the quick aliases they come up with is Brandon and Brenda, which is a reference to Beverly Hills 90210. There were lots of references throughout this episode that was scattered, and I'm sure you guys got a lot of it. Obviously, Brainy's main catchphrase is always Sprock, which is a Star Trek reference. 
And so I have to emphasize this, this was definitely the best episode by far, and the storyline worked so much better and it felt more contained because there wasn't too many characters on the team. I think at the moment the main problem they have in Team Supergirl in the present day is they have too many characters and they try and spread out the lines and they pass it around to all the different characters so it's just like constant like back and forth and you have too many characters going on and so that's my main complaint about this season like I have no idea why Morgan is there that's just my opinion obviously they just added Lena as well so that's another person when they're discussing plans and everything like everyone's just bouncing off each other and it's like way too many people in my opinion but maybe you guys disagree with me tell me if you agree with me also down below Okay, so let's move on from this young cat Grant is introduced in this episode, aka CJ Grant as she used to go by, and Eliza Helm is the actor that plays her, and she's good. But I'm gonna say she's a little bit over the top, I feel like she is maybe imitating Callista Flockhart a bit, obviously she's trying to play her, however, I'm gonna say is a little bit over the top, that's just my opinion, however I did enjoy her, and she's on a mission throughout this episode, and she finds some big answers by the end as she sees the truck going down the road and she sees Nia using her powers and so this is obviously her showing up in Midvale for like the first time and this is where she bumps into Alex for the first time as well so I guess you know Kara probably already knows her by now however this is not when she is very famous so maybe it's later that Kara becomes a fan and like everyone becomes a fan because everyone is talking about Lois Lane and we had that cameo in that episode by the Nick guy and he plays a bartender he says like one line so you know they had a moment there but that was like super small anyway let's continue on from this and so we have aliens introduced in this episode that was a big shock I was like hmm have we been introduced to these aliens before but no literally we just cut to them and this guy known as Professor Naxum Talk, aka the Alien King, aka the Ringmaster, that was all the aliases listed on the screen. He's an alien who has a zoo, and so he goes out, he collects aliens from all over in different planets, and he is after Kryptonians, and apparently once he tried to go after Superman, and he was unsuccessful. So they're pretty much afraid to go after Kara because she is a Kryptonian and they had trouble with a Kryptonian before, aka Superman. And so Talk is very much so wanting to capture Kara. Well, he obviously doesn't know it's Kara, but he finds out and draws her out into the open. And so Talk and his helper, I forgot his name, they are Bismoldian. That's their alien species, so they're completely blue. And I mean, they were fun, but they were kind of cheesy at the same time. and. I did enjoy them so I thought it was like an interesting addition because I was not expecting aliens to show up in this episode, I just thought it would be like a normal mid veil episode with a bit of time travel injected into it. So I think this like took it to the extra level and it was like even more interesting so I did really like this stuff. And so they were originally captured a few days after this episode, that being Naxxam Talk, by the DEO. However, the space-time continuum has changed due to the events of this episode, and so he's free, and they will probably stop in the next episode. However, for now, they need to work on correcting time. So could he play a bigger part? Like, are they not going to stop in the next episode? I guess there is a chance, and I know in David Harewood's episode, there is an unknown alien ship that is going to be in the episode, so I'm wondering... What happens if they don't get captured and maybe their ship gets destroyed and they get a new ship? Or we get introduced to another alien species in episode 7. That could be a possibility but we'll have to wait and see but they were a nice addition. Okay so Kara and Nia test out their powers together, they have kind of like a sleepover. And so like I said Kara is with Nia, Brainy is with Kenny and Kenny also goes back with Brainy and they have this really nice moment and it was very funny with Kenny's mom bursting into the room and Kenny's like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. However, Brainy like completely disappears and they go on a mission, they go to the school and Brainy is left alone for a bit and he ends up enlisting in literally every single high school club, which was funny. And just gonna say this, Jesse did some awesome baseball bat tricks in this episode. I thought it was very cool and very impressive. I was like, is this CGI? But no, it was actually him and it was just very fun. And so, yeah. Over on the other side you have Kara and Nia testing out their powers and it was so much fun on that side as well as they show off and literally Kara is flying and Nia is using her powers on her and it's all kind of combining and we've never seen anything really like that and it was just them using their powers for fun and to show off 
rather than to stop aliens or anything like that. So I thought that was cool. Also at the start of the episode, some cool CGI as they hid the Legion ship under the baseball field and they literally ripped it up out of the ground and like put the ground over and I thought it was like a really good combination of powers. And so continuing on from this, Kara and the team are set up by Tork, aka the Alien King, aka the Ringmaster. So the van is moving and Kara and Nia stop the van and at this point Tork tries to shoot them but he misses due to his assistant missing the kind of turn or you know specific spot they were trying to get to. And so he misses and the team become aware of their presence and so they're trying to track them and that's where things get very interesting and so whilst this is all happening Cat is chasing behind and that's kind of where the scene leaves off they run away in the spaceship because they're detected by Brainy so they're off and then we go back and you know everything's kind of fine for a bit and you have Alex facing off against Kara and Alex tells Kara about how much she gives up for her and this was a really great scene as they had this like mini confrontation and I'm pretty sure this is set up for Kara getting some life experience, you know, going to Catco and everything in her 20s and not becoming Supergirl straight away because pretty much how they were going right here with Kenny and Kara working together as a superhero duo, I'm pretty sure they were setting up like her potentially becoming Supergirl earlier. Maybe that is an actual cause for, you know, crisis and maybe this actually does happen. However, you know, originally in season one, she works as Catco and she isn't Supergirl by this point and she becomes Supergirl in season one. So yeah, maybe this is just like an alternate timeline thing or this is an eye-opening moment for Kara. And so I also must mention that the cinematography in this episode was really good, like the visuals were really, really great and they felt different, you know? And I think I cracked it down. They were using very different lenses and they were also using a very soft filter on their lenses and it kind of gave everything this little bit of a dreamy vibe and I really liked it so I thought I would just bring that in even though it has nothing to do with breaking down the story or anything it was just like a visual thing that I liked and so let's continue on with this nearer to the end of the episode you have this musical scene with Nicole who is singing Dolly Parton's 95 obviously this is Nia singing to Brainy and this was one of my favorite scenes of the entire episode so Nicole had some great singing. It was so full of life. And I'll take that, considering we're probably not going to get another musical episode again. At least we got a musical scene. And I love that song. I love 9 to 5. And I think Nicole smashed it. And, you know, it was just a really great moment. It was so touching and it really fit. So, yeah, one of my favorite moments of the entire episode. One of my favorite moments of the entire season. So let's continue with the last thing. The last scene goes like this. So talk... The alien king comes out of his ship, he decloaks it, and he captures Brainy and Nia in a force field, and he's like, what's going to happen next? That's why he loves this job. And so you're going to find out next week on Supergirl, and so it's a great way to end off this episode, which is obviously continuing into next week, because it's a two-part story, and it's going to be wrapping up next week. Like, it was just perfect, and it was a really great way to end the episode, so I really, really love this if you couldn't tell already. But that's about it for now. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy this video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment. Click here to watch my latest video. Also, please be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications to not miss any videos. Remember, we're going to be doing my Supergirl trailer breakdown tomorrow. Also, there was some news about Supergirl potentially doing a spin-off after the show ends. The showrunners commented on that. That is going to be coming out probably tomorrow along with my trailer breakdown. We'll have to wait and see, but you're going to be seeing that soon. So for now, thank you guys for watching. I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye. I see red.